We start this experiment by setting up the reflux apparatus on our bench. First we clamp a 100 ml round bottom flask to set securely inside a heating mantle. It has to sit snug and be in touch with the surface of the heating mantle so the heat can be transferred into the flask. Next we take the condenser and attach the water hoses. The incoming hose gets attached to the bottom of the condenser. The top one is the outlet. We add a few boiling chips into our flask and then put the condenser on top of the flask. We open the tap to achieve a steady flow of water. This might take a moment for the water to run through the hose and hit the condenser, but we try not to crank it too hard. Next, we add a funnel on top of the condenser. In the fume hood, we measure out the first reagent, which is 15 milliliters of ethanol. We take this back to the bench and add it through the top of the condenser into the funnel. Again in the fume hood we measure out the second reagent which is 15 milliliters of glacial acetic acid. We take this to the apparatus and add it into the flask through the condenser. The last reagent is 3 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. We measure this out with a dropper. And then take it back to the bench and add this into our flask. We remove the funnel and turn on the heating mantle. And we have to wait until the solution is boiling and refluxing before we start the timer. Putting the funnel on a tissue on the bench wasn't a good idea as the concentrated acid has eaten through the tissue and damaged the bench top. After 15 minutes, we stop the heating and remove the apparatus from the heating mantle and let the solution in the flask cool off while the water is still running. In the meantime, we set up a separating funnel in the fume hood. Once the solution has cooled off, we can remove the condenser from the flask and take the flask to the fume hood, where we pour the solution into our separating funnel. It's a good idea to have a beaker underneath just in case there is leakage or spillage. We carefully rinse the round bottom flask with ethanol or acetone and then let it dry on the drying rack. In the fume hood we measure out 10 milliliters of sodium carbonate solution. We slowly add this to our reaction solution in the separating funnel. While initially there might only be a few bubbles, it turns into a very vigorous reaction with adding more carbonate solution. So it has to happen slowly or the reaction will be out of control. Once all the solution has been added, we unclamp the funnel turn around and immediately open up the tap to release any 
CO2 that is being produced. We start shaking first just once or twice before opening up the tub until the reaction becomes slower and we can give it a good shake. And within a short time, the reaction is complete. We clamp the funnel and drain the aqueous layer. Sometimes it's hard to see where the interface between the two layers is. At that point, we can add a few drops of water, which will make it easier to see where the aqueous phase ends. And then we can complete draining the aqueous layer. The next step is washing the solution with 10 milliliters of water which we add to the separating funnel. And again, we shake this one, opening the tap frequently to start with, then just shaking it vigorously. This only requires a minute or two of shaking and the reaction is complete. After draining the aqueous layer, we add the third reagent, which is calcium chloride solution. This is a drying agent. So it will draw some water out of our organic layer. We add this into the funnel and repeat the shaking process. And then we drain the aqueous layer. Now that we're done with the washing process, we pour the remaining organic extract into a dry conical flask. Stop the flask and take it to the bench. As we've already added a drying agent, this doesn't require a lot of sodium sulfate, usually a spatula full, will dry the solution completely.